years ago, the Rhine River was not canalized and was much larger than today. Maybe something like two miles large, even more than that. And, uh, well, it was not possible to build so close and today along the river. This military camp was very important because it was in order to protect what was the eastern border of the Roman Empire. And the Roman Empire, the limit of the Roman Empire was the Rhine River. So we had every few kilometers such big fortification, big military camp to protect the Roman Empire. I'm not able to show you the caserne of the Roman people anymore because everything was destroyed in the 3rd century. And I'm sure you know the man who has destroyed the military camp, Attila. Yeah? <laughs> the Hans people, Attila. He has destroyed everything. And we have to wait 200 years more, huh? longer, to have the first city here, which was created from the Franks people at the beginning of the 6th century. It was the time of Clovis. And little by little, this city, this Frank city, became larger, bigger, even important in the Middle Ages. And the city of Strasbourg, as soon as the region of Alsace, was belonging to the big empire of Charlemagne. Do you know Charlemagne? Yes. yes, Charlemagne. He was a very important emperor. He had a big empire. And when he died, his big empire was shared between his three grandsons. And between these three grandsons, one of them was called Louis the Germanic. And he got the region of Alsace. So we became German with the Treaty of Verdun, which was after the death of Charlemagne, 843, we became German. So keep in your head that in the Middle Ages, we were German and not French. We is the foundation of the Holy Roman German Empire, which was one of the biggest empires we had in Europe in the past. We were belonging to it. So from the end of the 10th century until the end of the 17th century, 700 years long, we were German. Um, during that time, you have to understand that Strasbourg was a small republic. What does it mean for a city to be a republic? Usually you do it, you, you say it for a state, for a country. But for a city, this is something special. It means Strasbourg was an independent city. It means Strasbourg had its own government. And we had a constitution, especially for the city itself. Which is something unusual, of course. Huh? Uh, yes, uh, and we had many privileges, like for example, we could do our own money, which was very nice. We had the right to print the coins. Not anymore today, that's a pity. Yeah? We can't do our own euros. <laughs> that would be nice today. <laughs> and in the 17th century, we had a long war. Maybe you've heard about it. Uh, the Thirty Years' War. From 1618 to 1648, it was a religious war. Catholic, I'm sure you know the family of Habsburg from Austria, huh? they were Catholic, against the Swedish Protestant army. And that was awful for the region of Alsace. We think that about 40% of the population was killed during the war. Lots of villages were entirely destroyed and don't exist anymore today. That was a, a very, very bad war. Uh, after the war, with the Treaty of Westphalie written in 1648 in Germany, we became French. For the first time of the history, it was written in this treaty that the province of Alsace would be given to the French kingdom. So we became French for the first time of the history. We stayed French for about 200 years. So we became French at the time of Louis XIV. I'm sure you know this king, the same king. Have you been in Versailles once in your life? Yes. You, no, but maybe in the future. <laughs> Um, so we became French for 200 years long, about. 200 years later, in 1870, we had another war. France against Germany, a part of Germany, Prussia, maybe you've heard about it. And three months after the beginning of the war, we were annexed from the new German Empire. That was the time in France of Napoleon III, in Germany of Bismarck, you know these names? Huh? <laughs> and Alsace, as so as a part of Lorraine, 
became German, were annexed from the new German Empire. You are used to hear about Alsace-Lorraine together, Alsace-Lorraine, because we had the same history in the last century. So we became German, but that was an annexation, that was a hard time for the people, because if you are annexed, it means you have to change everything at one time. Huh? You change the language, so French was forbidden, we had to speak German. Uh, you change the laws, you tr change the traditions, everything is translated. Even the names of the people were translated. So suddenly the people got new identities, which was a little bit difficult, new names suddenly, for about two generations. So think about the fact that we did this, the first world war on the German side. But Germany lost the war, so we became French again after the war. Uh, With the Treaty of Versailles in 1919, we became French again. So we had once again to change everything. The names were retranslated, but not exactly the, the same than before. <laughs> we had to change the language once again, Something to change the laws, to, to change the traditions, everything. Yeah. Until the Second World War, we have started the war on the French side. But in 1940, Hitler has occupied Paris and the half north of France, and we became German again. We were occupied military occupation of the Nazis four years long, from 40 to November 44. And the 23rd November 44, we were liberated from the French army of the General Leclerc. And since this date, we are French again. <laughs> Let's see what happens tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this history. We don't want to change anymore. <laughs> I just wanted yeah, to explain to you the history to make you understand that we were always on the side of the loser. <laughs> ah. <I wonder> why. <laughs> that was a strange feeling. Nobody asked us what we wanted to have. <laughs> Can you imagine that my grand grandma like she has changed four times the nationality in her life without having to move? Yeah, well, that was complicated for the people, you can imagine. But today, and since 70 years, we live in peace. And that's something very nice. We know what it means, you know. Uh, being in peace during 70 years, we have a lot of chance, and I hope it will go on like that. Uh, 70 years, and today, we are not in France, we are not in Germany, we are in Alsace, and we are in Europe. Huh? Europe is something very important for us here in the province of Alsace because we work with Germany today and we have no border anymore. You saw before we went on the bridge, we drove on the bridge, I didn't ask you your, your passport. But 15 years ago we had to stop, we had custom and we had to, to show our passport. And we had once on the other side another currency. Today we have the euro and that's something very nice for us. The province of Alsace is a little bit special. We are French and don't say the contrary to the people, they feel French. <laughs> but we have kept many German traditions, some good things from our history. Like for example, if you are here today, maybe it is for Christmas, and we have a fantastic Christmas market. It is something German and Protestant. Protestant. So. Uh, we have such a Christmas market because we've been Protestant before. The French people, they don't have such Christmas market. So you see, we have kept many of the German traditions. I give you another example which is very nice for us. We have two public holidays more than the other French people coming from Germany. And we keep it. <laughs> We would like to keep it. <laughs> Do you know which days I'm speaking about? Uh, what you maybe call the Boxing Day? Yeah? 26 December. Here everything is closed. This is what we call the second Christmas Day. Like in Germany, but the other French regions, uh, it's not closed. It's not a public holiday for France, just for Alsace, because we were German in the past. Hmm? Uh, and the second day is the Good Friday, the Friday of Easter, huh? is also a public holiday. Is it also in your country? Is, yes. is everything closed at no. that day? No. no. Even <laughs> you, you never close your shops. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, well, that will be maybe soon the, the case in our country too, because they would like 
they speak about opening the, 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 the stores on, on Sunday. Lots of people don't want to have it, but well, let's see what happens in the future. <laughs> So have a look on your left, you have a nice district with big private houses. This is the nicest district we have in Strasbourg, the most expensive one. I give you the price if you want to buy such a house for one square meter. One square meter is a 10 square feet. For a 10 square feet you pay about 7,000 euros. Is it expensive for you? Yes. yes. For us it is. If you sp if you tell it to German people coming from Munich, they will all say, oh, so cheap. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it depends. <laughs> and the district is very nice because you are close from the historical district, close from Germany, which is also something very important. And it's very green here. Have a look at the garden you have on your right. You see the people, they like to go and jogging in the garden. This is the, the nicest, the biggest garden we have in Strasbourg and it was built during the time of Louis XIV. Uh, if you've been in Versailles, around the castle of Versailles you have beautiful gardens and this one in Strasbourg was built from the same gardener than in Versailles in the 17th and 18th century. Have a look on your right, you have a nice perspective. You see the avenue bringing you to a building just on your right, the yellow building you have oh, on the back. Wow, nice. The name of the building is Josephine. It's surprising for a building to have such a name. Do you know who was Josephine? Napoleon's wife, exactly. And she was used to come here and to organize some festival ceremonies inside of the garden and of the building. That's the reason why we have given to the building the name of her. <laughs>